Steve Phillips and welcome to Casino Gaming 101. This session will be on roulette. We will go over all the basics, we'll go over all the odds, we'll go over strategies, and we'll also go over table etiquette. Hang around to the end and I'll share a story with you how I turned $20 into $6,000 in 10 minutes. But first, I want to teach you the game itself and the game that we have here is what's known as American Roulette. It's with a double zero. If you ever see a French Roulette, it has a single zero. You won't see them a lot anymore. They used to have them in Atlantic City when they first opened. I haven't seen one in years. It's a better bet for you. You get more action for your play. The other Roulette is Russian Roulette, and we're not going there tonight. To start the game, you're going to go to the table and you're going to buy in. Let's assume that you buy in for $100. You put the $100 on the layout. You never hand money to the dealer. The dealer's then going to pick it up. He's going to put it, put it down. They'll check it, and then they'll drop it in, in the drop box. At that point, you're going to get $100 in chips. Now, I'd usually, at this stage of the game, you're going to get dollars. So there's, on a roulette table or any other casino table, there are denominations of chips. The whites are one. Reds are 5, the greens are 25, and the blacks are 100. Now the roulette chips they give you are going to be a different color, and they're only good on the roulette table. Don't take these away from the roulette table. When you leave the game, hopefully you'll have chips, and you'll say color up. The dealer will bring them in, and he'll give you regular casino chips. So now you've bought in. One thing you want to watch is they're going to mark up on the wheel what your chips are. And they should be dollars. Sometimes you might be a high roller and you want $5 chips or $10 chips. Either way, they're going to mark it up and you want to make sure they mark it up correct. Not that the casinos are going to teach you, but there's a human being behind this wheel, behind this layout, and they can make mistakes. So now they're going to hand this off to you and usually they slide them out in such a fashion where you can get them. They're right in front of you and you have your $100 in chips. At this point, the dealer will say, place your bets. Now, there are a lot of different options on this layout. There's some good bets. There's some not great bets. This game doesn't always have the best odds in the casino. And when you spread out in so many, you're taking these odds and you're spinning fast and fast and you're getting a lot of action, but it goes fast and furious. In a game like Blackjack, where you can lower the percentage to a half of 1%, you're sitting, you're waiting for a hand, you get it, it has to come to you, the dealer, the dealer turns them over, it just takes more time. So this is fast, the action's fast, it's, it can be very exciting, it can, you can win a lot in a hurry, okay? So let's explain all the bets first. We'll start with the best bet on the layout, and that's betting one number straight up. One number straight up pays 35 to one. And my strategy in this game is always I'm going to hit a number and I'm going to win some money and stay for a couple rolls and then I'm heading to the cashier. The casino odds on one number straight up on that wheel are 35 to 1 and there's only a 2.5% house advantage on that. That's not a bad bet as the casino goes. That's not too bad. But there are a lot of other bets on the layout. And you can split two numbers. Split two numbers is two numbers a bet and that pays... 17 to 1. You can do three numbers, which is known as a street, and that pays 11 to 1. You can bet four in a square. Four in a square pays 8 to 1. You can bet six numbers, often known as a double street. Six numbers pays 5 to 1, and there's one spot on the layout where you bet five numbers, and that pays 6 to 1. Now, the odds on these, as you bet the wheel, the odds on these, they're going to go down as you spread out. If you bet two numbers, there's a there's a 5% house advantage. If you bet three numbers on that wheel, there's an 8% house advantage. And when you bet four numbers on that wheel, you have four separate numbers on the wheel, it's a 10% house advantage. When you bet five numbers, it's 13. And when you bet six numbers, it's 15. So the more, you know, you think you're getting more action. I'm betting six numbers, I'm betting five numbers, I'm getting all this action. The more you spread it out, the more bets you make with one chip, the more the house advantage. Now, the other bets on the layout are the bottom line here. The bottom line is all even money. That's 40% because, of course, you have these two zeros of the house numbers, which you're going to lose on. So you have this bottom line. You have low, even, red, black, 
odd and the high numbers, and that pays even money. And that means that if you bet one, you win one. The more you bet, the more you win, just like anything else. We like to accent the positive. Then you have the columns here. The columns here pay two to one. That's the column all the way up. It's 12 numbers. They pay two to one. Then you have the sections of the wheel. The sections of the wheel are right here. 33.1 is your payoff. Again, if it was a fair game and you were getting your right payoff, it would be 33 and a third. Okay, you have your first 12, your second 12, and your third 12. Okay, so now that we've laid out some bets, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go for a spin and, and we'll show you like what would happen during a, a layout. Now you really don't want to bet like this because you're betting, you're betting against yourself, you're betting to the house advantage, but we'll, we'll just do it for fun and we'll take a little spin and we'll see what happens. The dealer will call ball is out. And as the ball comes down, It'll hit the chip reflector, and it'll drop into what's known as a pocket. Dealer calls no more bets. Your winning number is number 15. So 15 is your winner. So at this point, the dealer will take all the losers. Now, very important etiquette-wise on this game, while this marker is on up, don't touch anything. This is when the dealer is making his payoffs and collections. So you really don't want to, you know, you don't want to get in there and bet the next one. you got to be patient and wait while this marker's out and let him do his job. Now he's going to clean up this area here. We don't have anything inside, okay? It's not the first 12, it's a low number. It's not red. It is odd. And it's not the number here. And now you work the columns. Now what's left on the layout are winning bets, okay? So you have the low, 1 to 18. You have the black, you have odd. You want to pay 2 to 1 on the section. And you're going to pay two to one here. Well, you got a lot of action and you have some winners, but you didn't really make a profit because this is how much we bet. But we bet everything there. Some people, they like to bet everything on this game. They just like action, you know? So somebody can do a bet like this, for instance. Oh, some people say, I love the four corners. There is a strategy four corners. And I'm going to tell you about the strategies on this game in a minute as well. There is a strategy. Uh, some people will say, all right, I like the corners, okay, I like this corner, and I like this corner, and I can bet, I can, people like to bet their pet certain numbers, I was born on the 22nd, you know, I'm going to bet the 22nd, and, and I'm going to bet the 35 and the 36. Now, the wheel itself doesn't correspond to how it is on the layout, so we'll go over that as well. Um, the number most often bet in this game Believe it or not, is this number right here, 17. And I've got some stories about number 17 as well. But I don't know why, maybe because it's in the middle of a layout, but if you ask any croupier, what numbers bet the most? It's 17. The numbers bet the least? Zero and double zero. A lot of people bet them, they split them. You can do three in a basket. You can bet them straight up. You can split them with these. Some people don't think you can bet them. And some people don't like to bet them because they say, oh, that's the house number. I'm going to lose. A another number bet the least is 13. People got a thing about 13. Unlucky. Also, numbers that are least likely to be better are these down here because a lot of people will play their birthday. And nobody's born on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 35th, or 36th. So they tend to get a little less action. So let's play, and here we've got a fair amount of bets out. We'll see what happens. We'll go for a spin. Balls out. And as the ball slows down, the dealer will call no more bets. And the winning number is 24, so the dealer's going to mark that. And geez, he had all them bets and all that action. I guess it didn't work out. And now he's going to collect those. He's going to pick up the marker, and he's going to call, place your bets. At this time, you re-bet. Now, I've got a certain number I like to play, to be honest with you. And some people are hedge bettors. There's a lot of systems on this game. 
Uh, I, I'm not a hedge better. If I win, I want to win. I, I, so I like 36, and there's a neighborhood of numbers around there. Sometimes it'll fall in and out of that pocket, and it might land the one next to it. In my case, it's 13, 24, number one, and a double zero. Don't like to bet a lot. Don't like to spread out a lot. And I take my one number, which is my pet, and I'll load up. You know? Five. I'll bet ten. Okay? And then sometimes... There's a minimum and maximum on this game, and usually it's, uh, it's $10 to $15. We'll assume we got a $15 game here. So the other thing I like to do is I like to bet the last number. I don't know why, but it was 15. You know, sometimes there's a variance on this game. Sometimes maybe the dealer spins the ball the same way, the wheel goes the same way. When I used to deal this game, I used to notice that, God, that comes up a lot. And they, they would tell me when I worked in a casino, you got to spin it a little different each time. But dealers are creatures of habit, and sometimes they're just doing the same thing and the same thing. I don't know, you spin the ball the same way. It seems logical to me. I don't have any statistics on that, but I like to play the last number. So here we go, and we're going to spin it again, and we'll see what happens. No more bets, and the winning number is 23. You can tell I'm not setting this up. We didn't have anything yet. All right, so now the, the, the dealer picks up the marker. It's time to bet again, and, and let's talk about a couple of the systems that, that I've seen in this game. You know, you, you can look in books and YouTube, and, and everybody's got a system, a system that's going to win, it's going to make you rich, you're going to get rich, you're going to bet this system, and you're going to make a lot of money. It's a great system, it works all the time, da 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 No. That's the short answer. Uh, probably the most, the most popular and most famous of this system is one called the, um, the Martingale system. In the Martingale system... The idea is to bet, let's say you're at a $15 game, which is about, let's say 25, just, just to keep it even. So, so you've got to bet a minimum of 25 on the outside. So, so you make that 25 bet. Let's say you're, you're doing a color, you do black, you know, and uh, the idea is it, if it doesn't come up, then you're going to double your bet and you're going you're gonna to get your money back. So now you lose the $25, it doesn't come up, the wheel spins, and it's red. And then what you have to do is, the idea is to double up. So the next time, you bet 50. Didn't come up again. Next time, you bet 100. Didn't come up again. The next time, you're going to bet 200 because the idea is to win your money back. And some people extend this, this to bet an extra unit. Well, I don't want to get even. I want to get ahead, so they'll bet a little more. I, I've got a word for that. I call it chasing. So, so now you bet again, and it comes up red, and it, now you're 200 in, and then you're 400 in, and then you're 800 in. Six rolls into this, you're 1,600 in, and that's not much of a variance. I, I've seen the same color come up a dozen times or more. So, I mean, by now, to win your 25 back, you're already 1,600 in, and you're reaching the table limit. So this is a very bad system, and, it's, and, it's, and a lot of people play this, and you might play this for for, for days on end and kind of do okay, I won my money, I won my money, but you're going you're gonna to run into a variance where six, eight, ten times in a row, that color's not going to come up. And you're going to lose a lot of money to win your original $25. So that's, that's not a good play by, by any stretch. I, I, I would even, if I were to play a system at all, it would be a reverse martingale because if I win... I want to bet a little more because I like to think I got house money, but that's kind of a misnomer too because it's never really house money. It's just your money that you lost some other time that you're winning back. So, but but I, I might be inclined to press my bet. There's a lot of other bets that, that people will do on the wheel, and one of them is called the, uh, the corners. People have bet a lot of corners, you know, boom, I got this and I got this, the corners bet, you know, and I got all these corners. And, and, and the thing is, your corner is going to pay eight to one. So now, you know, maybe you hit one of these corners, unless you get the good one, you hit one of these corners, and well, let's take that, you bet one, and you won, I won, it was one of my numbers, and well, you got eight back, you, you broke even, okay? I mean, there are a lot of numbers that, that, that couldn't come up. I, I, I've, I've seen systems where, you know, uh, I'm going to bet two red numbers in a row, and if that doesn't work, I'm going to switch to black, and I hate to say, 
None of those are really good systems. So you can play this game. You can have some fun. You can do a lot of chips. Uh, a lot of these systems, one of them I saw was you bet a color, you bet black, and then you bet, you bet a dozen red numbers. Well, that's fine and dandy as long as one of those red numbers that, that you didn't bet comes up. So the idea is, you know, there are things you can do where you can play a long time by betting this and betting that. You're not going to win, but it'll take a long time to lose your money. And if you're there just to enjoy and have a couple of drinks and sit down in the nice comfortable chairs at roulette and enjoy and have fun, but, but don't expect to go home a winner. But like I say, it's up to what you want to do in a casino. Personally, I like to go to the cashier's cage. So what we'll do, we'll stay away from that. Personally, I, I like to pick a little number. I pick a number. I, I used to bet my age, and then I fell off the wheel, so I, so I bet that. There was a time, once upon a time, and I guess I'm old enough to say, you know, I, uh, back in the day. Well, back in the day, there was what's known as uh, bias on a wheel. You'd go to a casino, and they, they'd have an older wheel, and it would land in a certain section. It would land in a certain section a lot. And I remember years ago being out in Vegas and I, I drew a little circle and, and I had a piece of paper and, and I'd mark what section of the wheel comes in. And I remember the pit boss coming over to me to back me off. He goes, hey kid, you're, you're not in school. You can't take notes here. Because wheels had biases back then and they didn't want to share that information. Now, these days, these wheels, the last one I bought new was $6,000. They're calibrated. There's such a point that they don't care. And they even post the numbers up, up on the board. How many, how many know the last dozen numbers that came up and what they were and the last colors and what's hot and what's not. They don't care about that anymore. So any advantage you might have had once upon a time is, is pretty much dissipated. So the strategy that I employ is, is to hit a number. Some people, they've got like a chaos strategy, it seems. They're all over the place. And like I say, depends what you're there to do. Personally, when I go to roulette, I, I'm there for about six, eight, maybe ten spins if I'm hitting. And, and I don't even want to sit down. I want to stand up because if I hit my number, if I hit my pet, if I hit one of the neighborhood numbers and I get, a, I get, a, I get ahead and I get a good stack of chips, I, I'm going to head home. So let's do it. Let's do a, let's do a couple of bets. You want to bet the outside. A lot of people hedge bet. I'm going to bet this and I'm going to bet that. Me, personally, if I bet my number, I've got a certain number, I'm going to bet the column, I'm going to bet the section, I'm going to bet the color it is. Well, yeah, let me do it with this money here so we can see exactly how we're going to do I'm doing it with house money. So let's say I'm going to bet the, I'm going to bet the color, even odd, red, black. I'm going to bet the outside. I'm going to bet that number is coming up. I'm going to hit everything I can. And then I'll bet the neighborhood, which are the, which are the numbers next to it. And I always like to bet the last number that came up. In this case, it, I think it was 23. And then we're ready to roll. Number 20, black and even. There you go. Again, now it's going to pay the winning bets. Dealer picks it up and it's place your bets. It's time to go again. Now, I'll tell you a couple of stories and let's get back to that 17. 17 was Sean Connery's number, the first James Bond. And there's a famous story. Let's play it just for fun. There's a famous story where, where Sean Connery won um, in Monte Carlo, and the number came up three times in a row. Now, the odds of that are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0001. Now, that translates to about 50,000 to 1, a little more than 50,000 to 1. But... It's a variance, it's a sta not a standard variance, it's, it's one of those struck by lightning kind of things, but that number hit three times in a row and that's a famous story. So as, as the wheel slows down and, and it hits that, that, that chip deflector and lands in the pocket, the dealer's going to call no more bets. 
In this case, the winning number is 15 on the corner. So, we didn't get a lot, but you got a little. You got eight, so the deal is going to cut out eight, and he's going to hand it off to you, okay? We're going to go for one more spin, and I'm going to share that story with you, how I turned $20 in the 6000 in 10 minutes. And this was a, a years ago, I was at Bally's in Las Vegas, and I, I was a crapshooter at the time, and I went to Bally's, I might have had $20 left to play with, and... I was like frustrated by all the action I was getting at the crab table, which wasn't good. And I just walked by the roulette table. Actually, those days you could throw in the money and say money plays. And, I, and I, put, I put the money on 36, which was the number that I liked. And the deal was fun. And as luck would have it, my 36 came up. And... Uh, it, it was lucky. What can I say? It's important in this game that you know exactly what you're getting paid. Oh my God, 36. That was crazy. Um, it's important. I knew I had 20 bucks on that number. And I knew the payoff was going to be $700. So it's important that you know, not, not that the dealers are going to cheat you, but you want to know what the payoff is. So if you have one number straight up and, and you split it with a number, you got to know that's a deck of cards, I call it. It's, it's 52. If you like to surround the number like this, this is called a picture bet. There you go. And, and you do something like that, the payoff is 101. It's a center and, two, and, and the three sides. So at this point, to finish the story, uh, I was like, wow. And I was like, I took my money and I, and I, I got a little aggressive and, and, I, and I bet, you know, next roll, I bet 50. And I bet the neighbors, you know, neighbors on the wheel, not on the layout as I explained. And that was a double zero, a one, a, a, a 13, and a 24, and they spun again. And sure enough, the 36 came up again. Now that's a $1,750 payoff. And uh, I was like, geez, you know, I'm on a roll. And, and the, ne so the next roll, I bet 100. And I pumped up the neighbors as well, the 1, the 13, the 36. Well, it didn't come up three times in a row. That, and it is 50,000, the 1 or over. But one of the neighbors came up, so I had to pay off there. So now I bet 100 again on the 36, and it came up for $100. $100 payoff is $3,500. So uh, by now, I, I, I've got 6,000 in chips in front of me. And, and I bet one more, and, and, and one, of the, one of the numbers came up. It wasn't my number. And I said, I want 200 on 36. And they said, no, you're over the limit. I said, I'm over the limit. I bought in for $20, and you guys are backing me off. You're afraid of me. I said, ah, I think the tide's changed. And I said, color me up. Now, when you color up, they're going to pull in your chips, they're going to count them. And this is another thing you got to check, you know. Again, you have that human element in there. So I'm going to color them up, and you're going to count them out, and they're going to know. Uh, and then they hand off the money, and they say, well, well you want to go to the show, you want dinner, you, what, what do you want? I, go, I just want my money. And, and I went to the cage, and I left the casino. And I guess the moral of the, the, moral of the story is, you got to take your money and run. You got to leave when you win. When you win, you got to hit. You got to go. Okay. Um, one other thing I didn't cover, and I want to cover because I I have dealt this game, is that if I hit a number and I make a big bet, that's the time I want to make a bet for the dealer. So you put your stack on and you put one off to the side a little bit and you say I want to bet the dealer on that particular number. So look, dealers like to gamble too. Uh, at this game, they kind of pull the tips so that they don't get that much, but it's always nice to get a big payoff. And I always feel like, hey, if they're rooting for you, maybe they'll try to root that ball in for you. Thanks for hanging around. I hope you learned something. I hope you had some fun. If I can teach you anything at all, the idea is 
When you hit something, you hit a number, you hit them hard, you can hit big at this game. It's 35 to 1 straight up. You can turn a little money into a lot of money. You go to the cashier. Don't hang around and play to extinction, as they call it. You lose your money. Well, I won, but I lost. Get to the cage and go. Albert Einstein, very smart guy, said, the only way to beat this game is to steal the money when the croupier isn't looking. Well, you can hit it. You can hit it hard. And you got to go to the cashier's cage and you got to run with it. You can also contact us at virtualcasinoparties.com or 1-800-YOU-ARE-LUCKY and we can virtually play the game with you in the comfort of your house. You can enjoy it with some friends. We can do a roulette tournament. You can play for fun and have a great time. Thanks again. I'm Steve Phillips. It's been a pleasure entertaining you.